Good evening, everyone. Time for another Bitcoin report. This is the Bitcoin chart from ClarkMoody.com. Now you can see that we just touched down below 86, right in the 85 range. We've got a little rally going here now. And if we go out to the three day, you can see we did get below that support line uh, that was established right about here and that comes down to about 87 or so so we got below that we're getting a little rally and uh, of course I pointed out when we crossed over on the moving average we we did cross over now we're rounding down so we're still in a downtrend the next level here is gonna be at about 80 bucks that was the last spike down and then uh, below that's all the way down to that $50 level. So how low are we going to go? Not really sure on that. If we pull out to the longest chart, you can see that the correction from the top, initially that $32 top that we got, took a good uh, couple years to work off. I don't know if that's going to be the case with this one definitely there's more to work off you can see on the longest term we're rounding down on the top moving average uh, line the blue one has not yet turned down so there's still a potential cross down in the future and that's what we got right here I'm gonna look more at the price action uh, when I take a look at the hash rate and do some comparisons there but before we do that let's take a look at this article from Want China Times that uh, came out on the 30th and this is Chinese investors go crazy for Bitcoin so apparently Bitcoin is really catching on in China and, and we'll see when I talk about it there may be some interesting implications from that now this is a photo of an Avalon Bitcoin mining machine a BTC craze is sweeping China as hundreds start to invest and trade large amounts of the virtual currency Bitcoin. The craze has given birth to a huge industrial chain covering trading, mining, chip production, and mining machine assembly. Tencent, China's largest internet company by value, said that the current demand for Bitcoin can be regarded as a type of futures investment involving the growth forecast of BTC's value and mutual bets on credit standing between upstream and downstream players. The major risk for the BTC investments lies in whether the currency can be embraced by even more people and become a standard online currency. While the company added that the new currency's lucrative outlook is attracting the participation of a growing number of savvy investors. Yang Yaojun, former founder of a university campus website, became a convert of a Bitcoin currency or BTC one month ago when he set up the website asicme.com to explore BTC business. He was inspired by the success of Zhang Shenpeng, a BTC enthusiast who posted an announcement of advanced sales on May 22nd, selling 1 million yuan. 163,000 U.S. worth of BTC denominated products in just two days. Bitcoin transactions are secured by servers called Bitcoin miners, etc. And down at the bottom here, this is going to be the key point. Figures show that China now boasts the most number of BTC nodes, which help control the computing power of the Bitcoin network at 85,000 to 20. Uh, Tencent said that credit is vital for BTC operations, including its trading platform, investment, mining, chip production, and assembly of mining machines. Initially, BTC was designed to become the main cyber currency, etc. So, I wanted to examine a couple of things in regards to China. The first one is going to be this number of nodes and the ASIC chips so I wanted to start by doing a comparison uh, from blockchain.info if you go to their site you can pull up the blockchain and then you can also pull up 
if you click on the link for charts you can pull up charts so I pulled these charts off of there and uh, these are at the all-time length starting in January 2009 and you can see a very uh, precise pattern here of the two big rallies that we've had in the Bitcoin very very similar to each other the initial one uh, run up parabolic spike crash down correction back long long consolidation period and then a rally and another spike and now we're coming back down into apparently if the pattern follows a consolidation period now what's interesting about that and as to whether or not we're going to get that is a comparison to the hash rate now as I pointed out the uh, addition of all those Chinese nodes apparently is having quite an impact you can see that the hash rate does not match the price action so if we flip back and forth between those two charts you can see the discrepancy so if we look at the initial rise and spike with the Bitcoin we can see we got something similar with the hash rate it makes sense because when it's profitable to mine more people are going to mine so we got that big price spike and then we got that initial rise in the hash rate but then you can see that the hash rate didn't decline nearly as much of a percentage as the Bitcoin price did now that also makes sense if you think about it uh, a Bitcoin mining rig is uh, an in investment not a significant investment I'm sure a lot of people probably made significant investments in them but if it's something that you made an investment in because the price was high and then the price crashes you're not necessarily going to take it offline uh, what else are you going to do with it so that fits the pattern that a large number of people continued to mine even though the price was declining and uh, so we get this leveling off effect until we get uh, the hash rate actually doing a breakout now that's around uh, maybe uh, late July 2012 now you can see we still don't have a recovery in the Bitcoin price into old highs even though we have a breakout in the hash rate but the hash rate stays pretty much the same until we get to the significant point here in this year where we get a serious breakout in the hash rate now what's interesting about that is I believe that is before the ASIC, any of the ASIC technology shipped but then again maybe just the actual testing of it saw that it caused that increase in the hash rate but you can see once the hash rate broke out that's when we got the Bitcoin breaking out into new highs and you can see it absolutely went parabolic at that point but now it's corrected more than two-thirds of the price that it hit the high I think it was 255 uh, something like that and we're down around uh, 87 so a significant correction in price but you can see virtually no correction in the hash rate the hash rate continues to rise so what does this anomaly mean I can't say it could mean that uh, we will have a reversal and explosion in price of the Bitcoin or it could mean something like what happened uh, the last time the Bitcoin price dropped and then consolidated is that people weren't willing to uh, pull their mining rigs but they kept mining uh, even with very minor profitability or even possibly mining at a loss I don't know so we'll wait and see how this one resolves that's a very interesting discrepancy there now the other issue I wanted to address is the effect that this could potentially have on the currency markets and China and potential exchanges there now we have BTC-E which is a Russian based exchange and uh, if you have bitcoins and you send them to that exchange you can sell your bitcoins for other cryptocurrencies or for dollars or for rubles so 
if you wanted if if you were bullish on the ruble you could uh, sell your bitcoins if you're seeing for seeing a decline and, and hold your money in rubles or dollars now what's going to happen if this boom in China continues and we start to see exchanges pop up what currencies will we see on that exchange and uh, will anti-money laundering laws from the US apply in China I highly doubt that so before we do look at uh, the Chinese situation let's look at their currency this is the renminbi uh, the renminbi is the official currency of the people's republic of china renminbi is legal tender in mainland china but not in hong kong taiwan or macau renminbi is sometimes accepted in hong kong and macau and are easily exchanged to two territories the primary unit of the renminbi is the yuan so that's the currency. Now, this is not a freely exchangeable currency. It's somewhat confusing. Uh, the best section on this is this section here on managed float. The RMB, or renminbi, is now moved to a managed floating exchange rate based on market supply and demand with reference to a basket of foreign currencies. Now, the U.S. dollar is also traded against a basket. So, it's similar to the dollar in that way. Most currency quotes are in currency crosses. So, you'd have the euro crossed against the Australian currency, etc. One-to-one -one crosses. But there are in indices, currency indices that are based on a basket. That's the case with the Chinese currency. The daily trading price of the U.S. dollar against the RMB in the interbank foreign exchange market would be allowed to float within a narrow band of 0.3% around the central parity published by the People's Bank of China. In a later announcement published May 18, 2007, the band was extended to 0.5%. On April 14, 2012, the band was extended to 1%. China has stated that the basket is dominated by the United States dollar, the euro, the Japanese yen, the South Korean won, with a smaller proportion made up of the British pound, the Thai baht, the Russian ruble, the Australian dollar, the Canadian dollar, the Singapore dollar. On April 10, 2008, it traded at 6.99 yuan per US dollar which was the first time in more than a decade that a dollar bought less than seven yuan and at 11.03 yuan per euro beginning in January 2010 Chinese and non-Chinese citizens have an annual exchange limit of a maximum of 50,000 US dollars exchange will only proceed if the applicant appears in person at the relevant bank and presents his passport or his Chinese ID. These deals are being centrally registered. The maximum withdrawal is 10,000 US dollars per day. The maximum purchase limit of US dollars is 500 per day. This stringent management of the currency leads to a bottled up demand for exchange in both directions. It is viewed as a major tool to keep the currency peg preventing inflows of hot money. A shift of Chinese reserves into currencies of their other trading partners has caused these nations to shift more of their reserves into dollars, leading to no great change in the value of the renminbi against the dollar. So this is a chart from netdania.com. You can click on the link below. And this is a cross of the U.S. dollar, uh, Chinese yuan. And you can see that uh, it is in a serious downtrend channel this is the dollar losing value against the Chinese currency so back when this downtrend began you had roughly seven uh, yuan to the dollar and now we're approaching six so my projection if you followed my silver channel and uh, other videos I've done is that we are going to a one-to-one -one, uh, exchange rate between the dollar and the Chinese currency and eventually I believe will probably surpass that so the question is how does that impact Bitcoin how is that related to Bitcoin I think it's very important because when we look at stories like this and 
they're reporting that the mining, the amount of nodes is the largest. China has the most number of BTC nodes. I can't see how exchanges are not going to be very far behind. Now we know we already have BTC dash E in Russia. I expect to see exchanges pop up in China. Now again, the difference with the Bitcoin is that the transactions that go from Bitcoin to an exchange are not going to be regulated. They cannot be regulated because it's going to be a transmission of one Bitcoin account or wallet to another. That's going to enable people to place their Bitcoins on Chinese exchanges. Now that's probably going to be a very large leap in trust. But as I've covered before, there's a significant amount of Bitcoins over on the Russian exchange. And of course, uh, it's going to be a free market thing. It's going to be about trust. And if people can't trust their coins on the exchange, they're not going to put them there and the exchange is going to fail. So there's a built in incentive for any exchange that pops up to have two factor authentication, to have uh, a, more and more verification because, of course, competitors are going to pop up. So what is going to be the impact of having Chinese Bitcoin exchanges and a lot of Bitcoin activity going on in China? Well, that's going to enable Americans to trade Bitcoins in China. And my guess is that there will be yuan denominated currency on those exchanges. I don't know what their money laundering rules will be uh, compared to America. My guess is that they won't be the most cooperative with American authorities if it's anything like the latest uh, Snowden issue with the Chinese and the Russians refusing to cooperate with the Americans. So this is a very interesting prospect uh, that uh, Americans and others may be able to circumvent the currently tight restrictions on Chinese currency. It may be that the Bitcoin is actually the doorway into that system. And we'll talk to you next time.